Well, we're here at the better. CCA workbench. Of course you do. Feel and uh, rigs and techniques we're going to talk about. But you got some bonefish facts. Well, you know, I, facts. that's because I don't know a lot about bonefish. I decided to look them up, you know. And um, I probably could tell you two things tonight that most people don't realize about bonefish. What's that? One is that they have a lung, like a, like a tarpon does. They have a little lung they can get you know, suck in some uh, air if they right. need to, because they're right. backcountry fish. Also, they're related to eels, just like tarpon, because they go through the leptocephalus stage when they're like a long, uh, a little larvae, instead of going from a egg to a little fish looking thing, they go through another stage called the leptocephalus, where they become like a leaf, like a, a real thin, it means narrow head. And what they turn like an eel, and right. tarpon do the same thing, cool. which I had I no did not I, know that. I had no idea. Good and, research, yeah, Dave. So, and you know, bonefish here in Florida, you know, our fish probably get you know 14 pounds. You know, this big one. Um, but if you go and fish in some of the deeper places like Hawaii and even Bermuda, um, some of the deep water, they really big bonefish, 20 pounds right. and up and upwards. Which probably I wouldn't doubt if you fished in the deep water off of the keys for bonefish. You could probably catch big bonefish out there, but nobody would ever do it because that's just not where we do it. You, you know? think that would maybe potentially be potentially, an incident, there could be something there. catch. Yeah, yeah. And they can live to be 19 years old. Whoa. And that's a long time for a fish. That is. You know, to, to, to live 19 years, except for a deep water fish, they can live forever, you know, it seems like. But, you know, for a shallow water fish, it's, you know, they can live up to 19 years old. Very tidal, like everybody's been saying. You know, they come up on the, on the tide, you know, come up onto the flats during the higher tides and head to the, to the deeper water during low tides and they and they use that conical snout and their little piggy you know face to dig down in the sand and get all the crabs and shrimp and and crustaceans that we know that they feed on but right. you guys like to fish on them trying to catch them with flies it's like trying to catch them with a with a top water plug almost well you know it's hard dave it is really one of the sought after fish on fly Correct. very difficult at times specifically you know where the fish are really big the one thing that you need to understand is that guys are able to fish for them all over the world because you don't have bait right using different types of jigs we showed one in jimbo's region a little flat diamond head jig here's another one that's been handmade and if you notice it has a little weed guard but it's a lead head splash is very light it's called a skimmer and, jig a lot yes of times. exactly and all of them have weed guards this particular one is made for fishing in the muds and that's why it's dark in color so the bonefish can see it i got you but when it comes to flies dave i'll show you a couple real cool little deals here um you know a lot of times the fly needs to have an, uh, the ability to not sink so fast so a lot of the fly tires are now are ch are making these things out of deer hair right the deer hair has a tendency to be um where it wants to float it's more you know? buoyant exactly stays in the strike zone longer exactly if you notice almost all the flies have a weed guard of some sort so that they can be worked really really slow now at times what we do is we will fish different types of patterns. A lot of stuff looks like crabs. This is a crab pattern, another type of crab. These have a little bead eyes or they come with little plastic eyes to give them a look. Uh -huh. Now the key to in a lot of situations is to make sure, again, having weed guard, light little hook, but a lot of times this material also helps act as a weed guard. It has oh, that crab so much bulk. Silhouette, silhouette, which is really perfect. And then at times we'll also use uh, things that look a little bit like shrimps. You know, this is, uh, we call this the redheaded stepchild. It looks like <laughs> a little shrimp. It's, it's an old like crazy Charlie. Right. Um, and then we also use um, the Merkin style of flies, which is a very, very popular um, yeah, fly you were telling that me you were tying your, your uh, crabs different. Well, this is a, a merkin size for a bonefish. You can also have it for a permit. Now, this is just one little trip that I do. I took that same pattern, but I always felt that with a floating line, I tie or have our, my tires uh, tie the lead eyes on the back side of the material. And the reason why is with a floating line, this has a tendency to sink like this this with the lead on this side and you let it go the line being tied here it's going to sink more natural like a crab would diving for the bottom 
So that's just a little Murphy extra little tip. Yeah, it floats now, away from the line. Yeah, and a couple of weeks ago we talked about how to rig shrimp for tarpon, uh -huh. uh, and we showed how you would use a crab. And there's the shrimp in the summer are real small, so a lot of guys to go towards a dime size or a nickel size crab, and you throw it on light monofilament, eight pound, six pound, with maybe even 10. Mark Croker, my friend, loves using 10. So that's, that's the same thing you do for a bonefish? Yeah, you hook it in the side, just like you would for a tarpon, the same way. Well, thank you Hey, man, much. thanks for putting me on deck here. I like this. Right? Yeah.